Hello and welcome to Edifying Moments. Hey man, guess what? I'm here, I'm doing my thing, and I'm solo tonight. I mean, it is what it is. You know, so sometimes you gotta, you gotta get in there, you gotta take care of business on your own. I ain't got a problem with that. Welcome to Edifying Moments, man. I'm Minister James Jackson. I'm glad you decided to tune in. We're gonna be brief. We're gonna go over some of the things that Pastor's been talking about on Sunday. If you missed it, Go back and check it out on YouTube or on Facebook, whatever you need to do, but you don't want to miss it. And uh, man, let's just get right into it. Pastor has been talking about precious faith. That's right, precious faith. Not just precious faith, but your precious faith, or my precious faith. So let's start with his opening scripture, what he, what he talked about on this past Sunday. Second Peter chapter one, all right? It says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Man, that is a lot. I'm talking about he went in on Sunday. You don't, I'm telling you, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. But like precious faith, like precious faith that we have obtained through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So let's talk a little bit about the word precious, right? Not the movie, but the word precious. So the word precious just simply means something that is valuable, something that you don't want to handle carelessly. And he's saying that your faith and my faith is precious. It's a precious thing. Why? Because of what it took to get it. See, anything precious or anything that have value, it was a process that you had to go through in order to get it. And that's what really makes something valuable, really makes something precious. So how does it say we got, we got faith? How did it say we have access to faith? How does, where does our faith come from? Well, we know in scripture that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, right? So that means that our faith comes from him. So what did it take for us to receive it? What did it take for us to have access to it? What does it take for us to be able to walk by faith and not by sight? Well, Jesus had to give his life. When you really understand what it was he went through so that we could have access to this awesome power, this awesome thing that, that we, can, we can have the evidence of the things that we don't see yet in our current life. Jesus had to go through a lot in order to get that. And so when he says this precious faith, that's exactly what he's saying. It's precious. Why? Because of Jesus' sacrifice in order for us to have access to it. It was precious. Right. So that's the first thing. Precious faith. And then Pastor went in and he talked about this. This one, this was here is so important. He talked about the importance of watching your mouth. Because if something is so precious to us, right, and we really value it, we really understand what Jesus went through in order for us to have access to it, then we won't handle it carelessly. And that's the thing about faith. It is it is given to you and it's operated your mouth. You have the authority. The Bible says that life and death is in the power of your tongue. That's right. You have the ability to access this awesome power that God has given you through your tongue. So you got to be careful about the things that you say. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, right? So that means that it is me borrowing the current emotion or the current feeling of a desired effect and having, having it right here, right now in the present. And then in order to do that, I have to make sure that I speak and say things that line up with what I'm believing. And because faith is operated and spoken with your tongue, then you have the ability to call things into your realm and call things that be not as though they were. And you have an... <laughs> You have the opportunity to call things that be as they are. Yeah, that makes sense, right? You have the ability to call things that are the way they are, and they can stay that way. It is, it is so simple that we complicate it. He said that my faith is precious. It is a precious faith. And because it's precious, I'm going to be careful about what I say. I'm going to be careful about the things that come out of my mouth. Because I respect, or we just got out of this series of fearing God. I fear God so much, and I respect everything that he's done for me so much that I would do nothing but honor that sacrifice if 
by watching what I say. Because the faith that he's given to me, it's not so that I can call all these things, these houses, these cars, and all those things. True, those things are great, and you can have them. But the faith that he's given you is so that you can do the work of the ministry. So that when you speak, things change and things happen. You can lay hands on the sick and they recover. You can speak life in a dead situation because you understand faith, how precious it is. My precious faith, your precious faith. What is the scripture we always say every time we close service in Life Construction Church? If you've, ever, if you've ever tuned in, we always say 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. This precious faith that we walk by, meaning that this is what we use as our guide. This is what we use because now with faith, we can change the atmosphere. We can change the way things are because we have the ability to speak something. And it changes because it's backed. It's backed by the potent power of the gospel, right? Because the gospel and the word of God is what we're using as a foundation. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So when we hear the word of God, it increases our faith or it makes our faith stronger or bolder. So that when we talk, we expect things to happen because we're expecting what the word says we should expect. So I'm not saying that faith is something that you use to, to call things into that has nothing to do. Like you can't use your faith to call somebody else's wife. Like that's not how that works. You can't use your faith to call somebody else's husband. It has to line up with the word. That's why it's important that you tune in on Tuesdays and on Sundays because sometimes people have, uh, have foolish faith that don't make no sense. But what we're talking about is the God kind of faith, the kind of faith that's, that's backed by the word of God. Right. So we say we walk by faith and not by sight. What does that mean? That means that our faith that we that we walk by is what we use as our foundation. What I speak and what I desire to see is what I will say. He said something really important. And if you missed it, I'm going to do the best I can to quote it. He says. If I don't like what I see. I need to say something different. Nope, that wasn't it. He said, the reason why I see what I see is because I said what I said. And if I want to see something different, I need to say something different. That's not it either. But it was hard to quote. But anyway, if you go back, you can hear it yourself. And I ain't got to sit here and try to remember. But the point is, you got to be careful about the things you say. He also talked about how important it is to set your atmosphere with your words. He talked about how anytime he sneezes, right, he always says, he'll sneeze and then he'll say, thank you for divine help. After a sneeze, like that sounds psychotic to somebody to say, thank you for divine help. After a sneeze, because that is something you do seemingly when somebody is catching a cold, right? But what he said is that I am not going to say what I see, I'm going to say what I want. And he wants to walk in divine health all the days of his life. So anytime he speaks, he makes sure that what he says line up with what it is he desires. That's so important. We can't, as believers, say that we believe the word of God. And then with our mouths, we say something different. You know, there's a scripture in James that talks about the difficulty of taming the tongue. It is very difficult. It's a very difficult thing. It is a process of renewing your mind but you got to change your thoughts because your thoughts control what you say. So you have to change your thoughts and then you have to speak something different. That's what we're doing here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. So what does that mean? That just means I want you to flip the way you do things. Right now, each and every one of us who have the ability to see, we walk by sight. In the natural, right, we walk and our eyes take measurements of things so we know how far to step. Or sometimes we're going up steps. Our eyes take measurements to tell our legs how high to go. You know, some of us, unless you're clumsy, like I, I was the other day, I was walking, I tripped over some stuff. Anyway, the point is that we walk by our sight. And so he's saying in scripture, in life, I want you to begin to walk by faith. I want you to just like you use your eyes to set your atmosphere, to see how things are, and then you make movements according to that, I want you to use your faith now to set your atmosphere, and then you move according to what it is that you desire. 
Man, that sounds difficult because it sounds like you crazy. Because it does sound crazy to tell somebody after you sneeze that I thank God for divine help. You know, there's some, some, sometimes you may get some, some information that is, that is wrong, that is not what you desire to hear. That is not the outcome that you want. But instead of taking in the information and talking about, oh, woe is me, it is more of a thank you, God, for working this thing out. One of our favorite scriptures, and we quote it all the time, is Romans 8 and 28. That anytime things don't seem to be working out my way, I always say this is an 8 to 8 situation, which means this is a Romans 8 and, 2, or 8 and 28 situation, which means that all things work together for the good. All things. All things means all. Because I walk by faith. What does that mean? Faith comes by hearing. That means that I take what's in the word. And that's how I set my life. Lastly, another thing he said on Sunday was the importance of allowing your faith to set your atmosphere. What do I mean by that? He said that if you use a thermostat in your house, then you, you already have an idea of what it means. Because you have a difference between a thermostat and a thermometer, right? A thermostat, you set a temperature and then you forget it. Because it doesn't matter what it feels like in the room, all you got to do is hang out long enough and it will match what I set it at. And that's what it means with your words. It don't matter what's going on. I'm going to say it. And then if you hang out long enough, it's going to match what I said versus being a thermometer. A thermometer adjusts according to what's going on. I don't want you to be a, therm a thermometer. I want you to be a thermostat. I want your words to be a thermostat to set the atmosphere in your home because you have the authority Life and death is in the power of your tongue. You can choose that anytime you want. You can speak it and things have to change. Cool? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Life Construction Church, building the kingdom of God. One life at a time. You are